without further ado, um, welcome to the Family First Life Solidity team call. Um, today is Thursday, March 9th, 2023, and we are going into week three of five of March. And I'm really excited. Um, we have a special guest, um, part of the team. We have Miss Kyra Harris on with us today. Kyra, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Thanks for asking. And um, not only is Kyra the guest on the call today, um, just to kind of brag on Kyra real quick. Um, she's also the agent of the month. And, you know, when we get together and we think about kind of who that should go to and why, it's really like who's showing up for themselves, right? Who's showing up for themselves, for the team? Who's making sure that well, they're moving right, they're moving left, and they're making tweaks and adjustments, and they're and they're plugged in. Like, talking to Kyra is like a breath of fresh air. Um, and, and not that I don't love you all, but it doesn't always feel that way, right? So without further ado, very special guest. We have Ms. Kyra Harris on with us today. Helped over 21 families this past month. And I know in March, she's going to be probably well past that 30 family mark if she's tracing at the pace she's going now. So um, Kyra, if you don't mind just to hit the call off, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you were doing before Family First Life, and kind of what got you involved with Family First Life. Okay. All right. Um, so excited to be on the call today. So thank you all so much for just inviting me to be a part of the FFL community as a sense of uh, presenting to you all. But I literally, prior to Family First Life, I worked in corporate America. I literally, I was what they considered the perfect employee. I did the job. I did the task. I showed up on time. And in 2019, I got laid off from my job. And, you know, we don't expect those things to happen. But when it did, it really just resonated something with me that said, you know what? I don't like no one really taking control of whether or not, you you know, the same day I'm coming in to put my two week notice in is the same day you laid me off. That was a problem for me. And I didn't like the way that they had control of that. So personally for myself, you know, prior to that, maybe three years prior to that happening, I had started a business. So I've actually had some previous businesses prior to this company. But what drew me to the insurance industry was I had a girlfriend of mine, they came in town. We had done some previous business in the past. And she was like, Kyra, you need to look into this. Like, this is like going to change our life. And I'm always open to conversations. And I always tell people, keep your ear open. You just never know who, who can be that blessing in disguise. So when she enlightened me on the industry, um, they basically said, come on, we're going to get you started. Start pre-licensing, get your license. But the company that I was with prior to joining FFL, I don't know. I, I guess for myself, I am what they call organized chaos. But I'm also not as structured. And I think, and I'm, and I'm not blaming that company. I blame myself for that. But I will say that I didn't enjoy the leadership I was seeing in the beginning stages. And for me, it was, I need this now. I need this now. I need this now. And I'm really just going with the flow. I'm really like, come on, I just got started. I just want to protect some families. What, what do you mean you want my list? What do you mean you need all of my people? And for me, that just was a little overwhelming. So when I got that cold call from Melissa and just y'all sharing the opportunity to me, that excited me. And I was like, look, Melissa, get straight to the facts. Put me on the phone with the head honcho. If he's talking what I want to hear, sign me up. And Rami called me and he's a fast talker. I'm a fast talker. We, we're, we're always up on each other. So for myself, that was the type of uh, motivation I needed, but, but also him allowing me to be who I am authentically and also allowing me to be coachable because there's never a season in life that you aren't supposed to be coachable y'all so for myself for me to just say okay I'm allowing this new level of coachability to come about in an industry that I'm unfamiliar with so I'm so grateful y'all that I found this lovely family and especially to be a affiliated with Solidity and Financial Society and everybody else attached to it. Awesome. And, you know, Kyra, it's it's crazy because everybody comes from a little bit different of a of background, right, before coming into this business. And that's the beauty of it, right? Um, but I hate how you said you were laid off, but I love how you said I was laid off after giving my two weeks and that didn't sit right with me. You want to control over what you were doing, right? You're like, I want to control how much I can make, when I'm working, where I'm working, what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. And you had some prior business experience. And then being able to kind of see that, take that, 
look at everything, and then being introduced to this industry. I like how you said you didn't enjoy the leadership, right, at, at the company you were going to be working with. I don't like that you said that, but I understand where you're coming from because it's like, if I tell you, Kyra, that I'm going to show up for you, that I'm going to answer the phone, that I'm going to help you with A, B, C, and then I'm doing E, F, G, like, you know, you have all rights to me to be like, hey, you're not doing what you told me you were going to do, right? Like, because we ought to do our side, you know, and um, you do a very good job of just showing up. And like you said, I think that like, if I'm going to put a star on one thing right now, it's there's never a season that you shouldn't be coachable, yeah. right? There, like that would, that that's like mic drop right there because it's so true. And Kyra, you came in and just like you said, you hopped on the phone with Rami. I love how you're like, we both talk so fast because me and Rami, we have like a, I feel like we're like rapping when we're talking. You know, it's like, who's going <laughs> to get it out quicker, right? <laughs> but, Pretty much. You, know, <laughs> so you were able to keep pace with that and you know, um, to the best of my knowledge, you know, you've been you've been loving working with Rami and alongside Rami and have a great partnership together. And, you know, you guys show up for each other. Right. And that's important. So love that. And just to kind of jump into kind of like the nitty gritty, so to say. Um, so, Kyra, when you came in, by no means were you doing bad by any stretch of the imagination. But like you said, there's a learning curve and there's different things that you have to learn in every industry. Right. right? So with that being said, talk to us a little bit about. Um, what you think has allowed you to really kind of tear up each and every month? Because I always talk about this, you know, like I think it's almost unhealthy to go from writing like 10, like helping 10 families a month to helping like 50 families a month. Like to me, that's like a red flag. I'm like, you're doing something you're probably not supposed to be doing and we don't want any part of that. <laughs> but with you, Kyra, you were really, it seems like every single month, you're just getting higher and higher and higher. And to me, that's healthy because it shows that the learning curve is literally kicking in, right? And that's a big deal. Um, so talk to us a little bit about, you know, what has helped you go from helping 10 or 15 families a month to getting, you know, now past that 20 a month marker. Okay, so we first started now, I call it ignorance on fire, right? You're, you're ignorant to what's around or what, what your familiarity is with the industry or the products, but you just know that, hey, they say they're gonna answer the phone. If one doesn't answer, trust me, you are already in auto dial for the next session. But as far as with growth wise, to be honest, uh, you know, you go through those seasonal changes even in your life. Like in previous calls that I was on and just sharing how, you know, this particular incident where me having to pay my bills, put a little fire under my butt to go move a little faster versus it got to that season of, oh, well, I got enough. And I don't like to be in that state of mind. It's just something about when you know that it's good enough, you lay back a little bit. But then I realized laying back a little bit came with people canceling policies, people, um, you know, not saying they're going to fulfill what they say they're going to fulfill, uh, the wing and the prayer type of uh, mentality, hoping that they come through. And I was like, no. We're not in the begging business over here, Kyra. You're in the business of protecting people. And honestly, after convention, for me personally, is when I really had a different vision that came about. You know, I talk to Rami a lot. I talk with you. I talk with Christina. And I just like to hear different stories so I can know what am I really, um, basically, what am I comparing it to? It, have you had that same experience? Can I be successful in this particular area by saying that same statement or stating that same role and purpose? Like you're not realizing that everything is really laid out for us. So it's really up to you. Okay, I'm going to say that it's up to you to go out there and actually do the work and implement all of the structure that is already in this company. So personally for myself, it would just be, Okay, I saw a little here, and then I saw a little there, and I saw a little here. And I'm like, I don't like this. I want to always do top-tier level type of stuff. So for me personally, at the convention, I was like, look, I'm coming home. I'm ready to work. I don't have time for excuses. I'm realizing even my approach and my delivery with conversations with clients has changed tremendously because I know right now you need this. And I'm not backing down. You need it. So hopefully you believe me enough to believe that I can protect you and your family. 
I love that, Kyra. And honestly, I don't think that there could have been a better answer than that. I love how you talk about ignorance on fire. You're like, but I said, they said they're going to answer the phone. And, and we answer the phone, do we, Kyra? You answer the phone. <laughs> All right, good. You know, to just like disclose everybody on this call. Yes. So not calling yes. from the home, call from the home. And Kyra, I love how you talked about, you know, coming out of convention. You just kind of were looking at it like, okay, like, again, step forward, step back, step forward, step back. And you're like, I don't need to step back. I can keep stepping up, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the beauty of this. And you said, I'm not in the begging business, right? Like, I'm in the helping people business, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in the business where I have lead flow. I have people I can talk yes. to. So I love how you talked about essentially, in other words, like you became complacent at times. And like, to be honest, I believe that everybody in this industry who levels up becomes complacent. I did at one point, I was complacent, but I had to realize, you know, something that had to reignite me, that had to refuel me, that it's not just about me. It's about the yeah. team. It's about everyone around me, right? And for you, you were sick of, you're like, I'm not going to do excuses anymore because things are, you realize things are going to charge back, right? That's not a secret to anybody on here, guys. Like, mm -hmm. there's going to be chargebacks, right? Um, but also, you realize, like, this isn't a game. Like, when I go in there, if yeah. I don't help them, I have to leave and, and be really nice and be like, oh, well, you know, Miss Mary, I hope you have an awesome day. And, you know, thanks for your time, even though she took your time. And and you could lie to her and tell her she doesn't need the coverage. But you leave knowing, like, damn sure that Miss Mary needed the coverage, right? So now I love how you're saying your stance kind of seems different, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm in there with a role and my role is to help this family. That That's the goal, right? So yeah. that's beautiful. And I think that the way you explain that of going up and up is just huge. Um, now coming in, Kyra, you know, we all have strengths and weaknesses, right? Just as people, right? And you and I spoke a little bit about kind of, um, you know, schedule, how schedule sometimes can kind of get ahead of us or get away from us, right? And it seems like you've really kind of like in that schedule and those non-negotiables down a lot more, which has been awesome to see. Talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, what your schedule looks like and what some of your non-negotiables are or what those look like, you know, kind of within, so to say. Okay. So, and to be completely honest and transparent, you know, there's, that's still something I struggle with y'all, you know, as far as keeping that steady schedule. I was on autopilot in my life for almost three years <laughs> with, with just waking up and just, you know, do a little work and call it a day. And until it reached a level in my income that I was like, yeah, I, I, I need to wake up now <laughs> and get my day started. So I still somewhat struggle and, and I hate to say it, and I'm going to be again, honest and transparent. Sometimes dial team for me, I still struggle with, I'm up at eight, but why am I not on that phone at eight? And, and it bothered me today. And I said, you know what, Kyra, you, this, this, this is going to be the last time you do this. Like, this is literally going to be the last time you do this. You don't have the right to say, I can wake up at 830 or I can just log in at 850 or nine o'clock. Like, I just don't like that no more. So I'm calling myself out and holding myself accountable on this call to say, if you don't see me on that call at 8 a.m. and I have not informed no one, please, y'all, text me, call me, reach out to me, because that's an accountability that I need on my behalf. Now, as far as uh, non-negotiables, man, go and see all of my clients when I'm tired and I don't want to go see all of my clients. I'm just being honest. I live in Texas. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Okay, you could be in Conroe one minute, you could be in Liberty the next, and I'm driving distances. Yesterday, I drove for a client two and a half hours, and I'm sure for you, a lot of you all, if you're driving, you know that this is the norm, but that's a field trip because I can do a two-hour drive just in Houston to get on one side of town. But personally, just knowing that if I show up, even if they're not there, I still showed up, and I am getting a sense of gratification by doing that now because I did say I stated where I was going to do on my behalf. So as time is progressing, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm still growing as a leader. I'm still growing as an individual. And I just want to hold myself accountable in areas that I try to give myself excuses in. Now, when it comes down to even in home, just stepping it up. You know, implementing all these things I'm seeing, I'm listening to all these podcasts, I'm listening to all these uh, motivational calls and, 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 and watching your in-home appointments, literally pressing play nonstop on the in-roll role and purpose to make sure they understood I'm here to collect something today because that was an issue I suffered with in the beginning. Like, why is this like they're acting like they're 
oblivious that they know that insurance costs money. And I'll make little posts about it and being funny about it. But the reality is that this is a transaction that's occurring right now. And your role and purpose really sets the tone and it lays out the facts that we will be submitting at today. And I just love the fact of knowing that I'm able to implement all of those type of things into the structure so that I can be a better um, servant in the field, honestly. Absolutely. And, you know, Kyra, I always applaud people who call themselves out because like, that's like me, like, hey, call, call me if I'm not on at eight, like call me and be like, hey, where are you? Because you're on, right? And I love how you said, like, you know, you, you still struggle with it, right? And like, there's always going to be things that we all struggle with. But at the same time, you're working on it. Like you're like today, today, Kyra is going to be the last time that I don't, I'm not on the dial team at, at eight o'clock. And you're like, call, guys, call me accountability, right? And that says a lot about you and your character too, which I applaud. And then also, you know, the thing that I always talk about is if you book the appointment, you have to show up, right? Yeah. Like you have to. And, you know, me and Rami have like this kind of ongoing joke of like, like, well, did you show up to all of your appointments? And it's because in the beginning, Rami would like, you know, like Rami, you know, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, so, you know, I'll unmute if you do, but I highly doubt it. Um, you know, Rami would say like, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to go to Miss Mary, you know, at 730. Like he's doing it out the day before who he's not going to. And I'm like, well, why did we set the appointment if you're not going to go? Mm -hmm. He's like, well, they're far apart. I'm like, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. So the fact that you're showing up to each and every home, just like you said, no matter what happens when you get there, no show that you help the family, you don't help the family, whatever it looks like, you know, you did exactly what you said you were going to do. So you did your job. You did your part. Right. And that alone, guys, is a non-negotiable is huge because Kyra, even just implementing that one thing right there, right? Showing up. Have you been able to help, you know, at least one more family by showing up? Yes, I have. And, you know, those are the moments that I'm really treasuring because had I not shown up, right? Or even feeling comfortable with calling and rescheduling that appointment, because at one point in time, I was like, hit or miss, they're done. And I, and I wouldn't even bother to do that. But the one home that I did do a reschedule and that lady allowed me to come in, I made a great commission on that. I went to church with her family. Right now she got me about to sign up her whole family with insurance just from that one call to just say, I want to come back and revisit you. You already had a policy in place. She already had her affairs in order, but yet she still allowed me to come. And yet I was able to earn all of that business. So I, I love those type of moments and I look forward to more of them. So that's where I'm just challenging myself to do more of the door knocking like Gianna and um, Miss Aphrodite, like watching them and seeing them like, look, I'm knocking on door eight in the morning. I don't care. I'm like, oh my God, eight in the morning. Well, guess what? Some people are early birds and they deserve to be knocked on the door early in the morning. So I just want to start implementing a little bit more of that in my process. But overall, yes, it has been rewarding to know I am showing up and I'm being rewarded by default because of showing up. I love it. And that's the easiest way to put it. If you show up in this business, people are going to show up for you and your clients are going to show up for you. And Kyra, you now have not only a client for life, but a family for life. You know what I mean? In terms of that client. So that's a beautiful story there too. And then even just saying like, you know, I, I plug into the podcast. Like for me, like I plug into all the podcasts, guys. I've been in this industry for nine years. Like there's still so much to learn. There's so many different approaches, ways to go about things, way to approach certain people differently. Everyone's different, right? So that ongoing learning mentality is huge. And now just to kind of jump into, you know, the next thing, you know, coming into a new industry, so to say, and, you know, being brand new, what was maybe one of like, you know, your biggest hurdles and how did you overcome that hurdle? Okay. Uh, I had, I'm very empathetic to individuals. Oh, I understand. Oh, it's all right. And I realized I was doing that a lot. I was doing that a lot for people that I knew. I'm sitting in your face right now. You're telling me how you don't have this. You don't have that. Oh, I just told my children, just put me in a box. And, and then when I started resonating and said to myself, nobody's just going to put you in a box. I've been through paying for a funeral and trying to figure out how to come up with the funds to avoid the box. So it's like now being honest enough and transparent enough with my clients to really just tell them, no is no, like this is my non-negotiable now. Like I'm not taking no for an answer. 
And sometimes those questions can can catch us off guard. And I, I just realized that as I'm sitting with these individuals, what what is the wrong or the harm in me telling you the truth? Because I had a client the other day, I had to tell her the truth. <laughs> and I don't think she liked the truth, but she appreciated me and she apologized to me. And then she said, let's go ahead and move forward and get that policy in place. And that for me was so rewarding because this business, y'all, I'm telling you, my personality, I have always been a, I can do it. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm not worried. I'm just focused. But when I realized in this business, it's all right to call people out on their wrongs. It's all right to hold them accountable for what they said or what they filled out or what they're requiring or re requesting from you. And for myself, I'm so used to just, oh, it's all right. To where here in this industry? No, it's not all right. I love this side of me. I didn't know this was inside of me. So now to just be so forthcoming and just being honest and telling it like it is, I said, this is a new part of my personality that I'm really, really digging. And yeah, keep them coming because I love the fact of knowing that I'm not doing no one harm by being honest and just stating the facts as what they are and not trying to hurt you or make you feel bad about it in the process. Absolutely. And Kyra, you hit that right on the head. I don't think I've ever heard somebody talk about them that they overcame like in that regard that well. And I say that because you talk about like, you know, like your personality is like, oh, like that's okay. Like, and you and I have talked about this a little bit before how we're both kind of like, yeah, okay, so how are you doing? You know, thank you. Make it a great day. Right. Like all of those things. But when we do that, like you're saying in a home, when we know that the client's not in that situation, we're doing a disservice. So you're like, I'm not going to disservice people. I'm not in the service business to disservice people. I'm in the service business to help people and help them understand what it actually looks like, right? You know, like the put me in a box, I don't think it's the worst thing somebody could say to me oh. now, right? It's like, I will come at you if you say, oh, my kids will just put me in a box. Like I will come at you because you have to understand, you don't know what the process looks like if that's what you're saying, right? And Kyra, you're saying, hey, I walk people through this now and they respect me more at the end instead of just being passive, like, oh yeah, you can call me back. They're never going to call you back. You know that. I know that, right? And instead of saying, you're like, hey, we're going to take a step back. Like they can't just put you in a box. Like that's not how it works, right? And asking those honest, hard questions in the home. So it's not like you leave and you're like, what this man or woman just said makes no sense. And I would just like agreed and nodded and said, yeah, and got and got out of there, right? Um, because I've been in those moments too. And it's like, well, why did I drive there just to disservice the client, right? Mm -hmm. So I love how you talked about turning it around. There's nothing wrong with telling the truth, right? That's what we're there to do is tell the truth, show them what they qualify for and help them understand why they need the coverage if they do need it, right? So Kyra, I think that that's an awesome thing that you've overcame is, being really uncomfortable in front of that client and bringing things to light saying, Hey, this is what it looks like. Like, you know, and, and that's awesome. And guys, let's not be confused. Like people don't fill these forms out like by accident, right? Like I sat with this woman, just to insert quick story the other day. And she's like, Oh, I, Oh, that was just an accident. That was an accident. I told it by accident. And I was like, okay, well, like, let's get back to the form. It was a final expense lead. And I was like, you know, like, what do we have in place for life insurance? She's like, oh, no, I don't need life insurance. You know, my son's just going to take care of it. And as I could have just, well, I'm like, oh, okay, we'll have a great day, right? I dug in a little bit more, like, what is that going to look like for your son? And by the end, she was like, well, I'm happy I filled this out. And it wasn't by accident. She was scared to be sold, right? And sometimes that's what people are scared of. So they have to see you as your authentic self, right? Mm -hmm. Like that very like nice that you and I have in us, Kyra, that, hey, how you doing? We can still have that in the beginning. Right. Cadence, right? But we're going to tell you like it is and, and a, with a big smile on our faces, right? Mm -hmm. I, I always say you can never say anything wrong with a smile on your face, right? Because you're just being honest. Um, so so I love that. Um, and then just to kind of pop to kind of a different sector, so to say, um, you know, when you're in home and, you know, just from the calls I've received from you in home, it seems like you really connect with your clients, right? And that's important for a lot of things, for persistency, for keeping business on the books, for having lifelong relationships with your clients and, and for trust. So talk to us a little bit about um, how you connect with that potential client um, 
and make them understand or make them comfortable, you know, while they're going through that process with you in home. Okay. So, you know, at first it, it, I, I do a little small talk, but I will be honest, y'all, I have changed so much because I used to small and talk and talk and talk. And I'm like, we didn't do anything today, Kara. No, 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 no. So I had to start compressing <laughs> the small talk. But uh, for me personally, it's always just coming in. I am full of the vibrancy. So I want to come in and hopefully shine a little vibrancy on you. But if I'm seeing the person's kind of in that funk kind of mood, like, oh, let's just get this over with. I can match that same tonality, but by the end of the conversation, I'm going to find something to connect with. And I've been in so many different industries, and especially with working in corporate, you you start to learn personality types. You know, you go to all these trainings, and you're learning this, and you're learning that. So for me personally, I'm a conversationalist at heart. So I'm going to find something that's underlining between us, whether where you're from, uh, uh, do you have children? Are you originally from Houston? I love to start with conversations as simple as that because I'm trying to see where can I connect? What do I know about their state that I'm familiar with? What do I know about, uh, if, oh, do your children still reside here? Oh my God, Nebraska, how did they get out there? Like just to have a little something to just break the conversation into different conversations, but then also just still stand on target. We are here. We're getting into business. We're about to start working. Sometimes I get so excited and talking about products that I know in my heart, oh my God, they could benefit from this. And then I'm like, Kyra, at hand, you're here to service them and provide life insurance first. Finish that. Finish that transaction. And I have to talk to Rami about that because honestly, I was just so excited to just let the world know, oh, you can have access to this and you can do this and do that. But when I realized, you know what, let's let's decompress this. Let's get this back in order, Kyra. I need you to understand we're here to fulfill the original assignment. Let's get some coverage in place. So putting on that hat of Kyra's business right now, get back here over here, focus, let's get it done. And yeah, building those just little general things with your clients, it goes a long way. I want them to remember me. I want them, now I'm coming in that house, like I like to actually say, I'm the one who's going to deliver that check to your families. Learn that at convention, right? But I let them know on the phone, yes, because I think you need to meet with the person who's going to be eventually delivering that check to your home. So that's where I want to build a relationship with you. One gentleman uh, I met that was on one of my leads, he told me when I went into his home, he said, I appreciate you coming into my home. He said, you know, I know I filled out that form online. He said, but the fact that you were willing to come and meet me in person versus do it over phone or a virtual appointment, that makes me feel like I can trust you more. So what that did for me, another check mark. So all I'm doing now is just realigning goals, realigning purpose, realigning assignments, and making sure that the authentic side of it still remains to me in my core. I like it home. I love it. I, I'm glad Rami recommended it. But I'm grateful that I do in homes. I'm, I'm dabbling and dabbling into the, the virtual. That's fine. And I'm, I actually just closed someone just now virtually a day two later to get her account information, but I got it, you know? <laughs> so I'm learning, I'm learning in the process, but overall it's, it's just rewarding. And I just want my clients to know personally, I don't want to drop the ball. And I got to follow with some clients that I do feel I might've dropped the ball. And it's not because of, it's due to maybe my own personal negligence or not finding the product for them right then and there in the home and going home and, knowing I got to write them out this one and, 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 and not following up accordingly. So I'm holding myself accountable to kind of go back through those old paperwork and, and hopefully revisit those clients. And, and, and if they didn't qualify for that coverage, and I learned that from you, Marisa, you still call them back and let them know that, you know, and I, I think one of my clients, some of her, her health conditions would not get her the great Western, wouldn't even get her the AIG because of her age. And I'm not realizing like, Oh man, I never really called her back and told her. So she's been on my mind and I want to make sure I do my part and follow up and let her know. So she don't think that this woman came in my house. We built a great rapport with each other and I've never heard from her ever since. And that's something that I'm holding myself accountable for. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And a lot of what you just hit on is huge. Even from like, you're like, I don't go, you know, I used to go in there and talk for 30 minutes. Right. And sometimes we do that because like we're uncomfortable, but we're comfortable talking. Right. Other times people will go in and they're just like, okay, so this is the life insurance. Like, and, they, and it's like, 
goes one of two ways in the beginning, right? And you're saying you're more conversational, right? And I love how you said, I've learned that I just have to ask a couple simple things, right? Like you said, like you literally hit on the questions I asked, like how long have you lived around here, right? Like, what do you do for work, right? Are the kids still around? The kids still in the area? You had a lot of family in the area because you're just trying to find, like you said, that one common ground with them that you can build off of from there, but you're not trying to talk to them for five or 10 minutes before you even go through what you're actually there to do that day, right? Um, because that's when you find a friend and they're like, I have to think about it and it just doesn't work. So Kyra, what you're saying is, hey, you're making sure that they're getting their life insurance in place. Anything after that is is great. But would it be fair to say, Kyra, that you probably talk a bit more with your client as you're kind of going through the actual application once they pick their product and in their choice? Definitely. I've learned. OK, I mean, when I'm, I'm just going through it. Oh, so. You know, because I hate dead silence. It bothers me. Even with friends, family, like dead silence to me is a no-no. Unless it's noted, like we are focused right now and it's dead silence for a reason. So for me, in the midst of that, that's when I'll just start a little small talk. Oh, okay, so you mentioned that you retired. Where did you retire from? But I'm going through the application. If, if I feel like they start going into a long story, okay, but pardon me for a second. What's your social again? Okay, all right, keep going, keep going, because I got to get through it. So those leads for me personally has helped a lot too, the templates, because I'm able to get the address, get everything. But I verify with them in, in advance too, because sometimes they misspell their names. Sometimes they misspell their addresses, okay? Sometimes they're misspelling the beneficiary. Like you just got to make sure that you're on target. But I do ask for the ID. Now, hey, you know, if you won't mind, just grab that ID, grab a voided check or pull up your account information, however you choose to, you know, prov uh, provide me that information just to let them know, look, it's still going to be in orderly fashion right now. And if I got a little extra 20, 30 minutes to, to talk, I I'll talk with you for a little bit, but I got to get this application done now. But now that I'm really trying to book stuff where it's appointment, it's an appointment, an appointment. I'm like, okay, I can't keep doing this anymore. We really, really, really got to realize our time is valuable too, and you have to drive. So, um, but like you say, if it's going good in the home, sometimes, you know, one policy turns into four. Look, next minute you know, they're offering a cocktail. I do not accept, but I say, I got to leave. <laughs> I have other work to do. <laughs> I love it. And Kyra, it's like, that's when you know too, like when they're offering you food, they're offering you drinks, like that you built a client for life, right? And I love how you also hit on like, you know, and I know not everybody is in home. There's many ways to skin a cat, as Rami would say, you know, I, and now I say that too. Um, but with that being said, you talked about, hey, yeah, they're, you know, like to go in home with someone, Kyra, you're like, if they're like, why do you have to come to my house? You're like, well, you probably want to meet the person who's going to be delivering that bed, right? Like that is very like commonsensical to me, like that to say that, right? Um, and also just in meeting them, knowing like, hey, like I'm meeting your beneficiary or I, I, I met dad, right? I met mom, right? And I'm going to be the one who's delivering this check to your family, right? And the pride in that is huge. And like you said, it allows for more follow-up, more diligence, and just more like wanting to, like you said, Get through what you have to get through there. If you have extra time, awesome. But realizing, like you said, you've got drive time. You have those back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back appointments. And, and that's where it's at. So you're helping one family. You're making sure they're comfortable. They're, you know, well-suited. And you're moving on to the next. But you're not making anybody less important, so to say, right? Pretty much. Um, so I love that, Kyra. Um, and then just to kind of hit on leads, because everyone's, you know, that's always everyone's big question is, you know, leads, leads, leads. You know, um, what is your average or weekly, however you kind of break that down in your head, your lead spend look like? And why does it look that way for you right now, so to say? Okay. <sighs> so I would say now I'm more open to going to much higher tiers than I've ever been before. Now, granted, when I first started, I think I was doing like 200 or 300 here or there, but I was doing it per um, lead cycle. And I remember... Uh, Rami had contacted me and he was like, hey, how much are you really buying? And I'm like, I'm buying like $500 per, what, you, what do you mean? And, and he's like, no, 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 no. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. I was like, no, I really am buying leads, like for real. And so I would say I was definitely doing on dial days 
like probably the past little couple of months I was doing the 500 and honestly if I didn't make money back or if I did I just was like you know what Kyra it's a part of the business and that's when I realized well Kyra you're kind of throwing away money right now I need you to start working this if you're buying these leads why are they sitting there so right now of course I still purchase ILC I actually purchased some uh for for today's dial day as well um I utilize uh some Facebook uh, leads as well. I've been uh, utilizing that one. I, I like those right now. I really do love those actually. And that one probably has been my highest amount that I've invested thus far. But I honestly am going to be entering into that three through five K range now because I see it to be beneficial for the type of lead flow that I want to see. I want clients. I want people that when I call you, you know that I mean business because if I'm going to go out there and work, I want to make sure I make my full investment back. And I also have the mortgage protection leads. I'm loving those too. Actually, I have some appointments booked for that this week. And honestly, with those particular ones, I do not mind knocking on the door. Okay. Because I pay for them. You filled out the form. I'm coming to your house. So that those are the ones I'm really excited about when I really start, you know, pulling up to the doorway and saying, hey, you remember me? Like, you signed this. You do know this, right? And I'm just in the area. I don't want you to think I'm a stalker, but I'm in the area and I need to make sure you're protected. So yeah, between that, but honestly, you have to have the income of, of leads. Like, I really realized that when I started out, I think I had like maybe $200 to commit to leads, but I made that investment back, y'all. And I didn't just say, oh, I'm about to blow it. I had to buy some more leads. So I want y'all to understand, keep that on going. Do not feel like you made it. <laughs> you have not made it. I know I haven't made it yet. I wish. I, I, no, I ain't going to wish. I know I'm going to make it. But I'm just saying that to say that our business is leads. We are buying people who want this information and want to be protected. You can keep waiting on your grandma, your aunties, your uncles. But how many times are you going to go through them? And I realized that early on, I never, I, that's why I love this company so much because of the leads. And that's what made me feel more comfortable because I already did the warm market. I already did all of the, everything that comes with that process. And I love it. TikTok, Instagram is really benefiting me right now too. I wrote like three, two policies yesterday and I'm calling her back to write three more on her kids tonight. So little things like that, but you can definitely earn your investment back. Whether it's one policy, whether it's two, whether it's three, but just go out there and understand you really do need flow, a leaf flow. So don't think you don't. Okay. <laughs> I love that power. And you just hit on so many great things from, you know, you talked about in the beginning, maybe you were more hesitant, right. To, to buy that many leads. But here's what I love is you said you invested in the beginning, maybe two or $300 in leads. And to be honest, Kyra, I know that because like of our conversations, but typically if an agent does that, like, it makes me really, really nervous because I'm like, are they going to be able to book enough appointments? They're going to be able to get in front of enough people, et cetera. But you were able to do that. But not only that, you instantaneously saw, hey, when I make this money back, I need to reinvest it back into some more leads because I know my lead spend should be about 500 you know, per dial day. And I need to get more towards that spend, so to say. Right. And so, like you said, you're still getting your ILC leads. And this is what we mean by diversification, guys, with leads like if you can work any lead type, you're never going to not have leads. And like, that's the beauty of, of, of family first life and of just a lead generated business. Right. So you talk about ILC, Facebook, you're in, in you're um, putting some mortgage leads in there and you've been seeing a really good return with those Facebook leads. Yeah. Yes. I'm not. Uh, yes, ma'am. I really have. I don't mind calling them. I don't mind calling them back. And, you know, I, I I'm really realizing certain areas I might have to change a little bit because granted they want the, the phone aspect of it and I can do that but I'd rather make those meetings and I'll go out there and work a whole week in New Orleans like my, that's my fam that's my people and and I love them so much to the point where I need them to meet me just like everyone else is meeting me <laughs> not Amen, <necessarily>, y'all <laughs> but I just I feel because I feel an energy and I know that the way I explain stuff and I want you to understand what I'm providing you in person, it just it, it just goes to the 10th power. So I, I really want to be able to kind of have more of those interactions with places that I am purchasing in different uh, counties. So I'm, I'm just trying to um, 
organize that to see what will be my best option with that. But I'm grateful for the people that are entrusting me with just the virtual aspect of it. But I'm a I'm gonna hit the ground, well, hit the floor type of woman. So <laughs> they'll be seeing me soon. Trust me, they will be seeing me soon. No doubt, no doubt. And um, I, I just, I love how, again, so you're not set on one lead type, guys. Kyra, she's willing to work any lead. She started, I believe, with internet leads, correct me if I'm wrong, right? And they were aged internet leads, I believe, probably one month, three months, and worked, worked her way around that. And guys, that's what this is about. We always say if you buy leads and you continue to work, you really only have to buy leads once. Meaning after that, you're working with the house's money, right? You're working with that the, the the ROI, right? You're working with your business's money. Because when we enter this industry, we have to realize we are a small business now. Even if it's just, even if you're like, well, it's just me. Well, guess what? The IRS is like, it's just you and you're a small business, right? That's how they view it. That's how we have to view it too, guys. We're business owners. So Kyra was not confused that she needed to reinvest. And still Kyra is not confused. Hey, we got to tweak a little bit here, a little bit there. But I know what my lead flow needs to look like. And I know that those reoccurring lead orders are pushing me really to action, right? Um, and I believe everybody should be on some type of reoccurring lead order because it's going to push you to work. It's going to push you to be like, you got to do this. You you just, you know, you just paid 2400 for the month. Like, are you not going to work the leads? Of course you are. And guess what? If you do, you're probably going to go out and see a great return, right? If, if you have an attitude like Kyra anyways, right? So- <laughs> That was awesome. And then um, if you like three words that come to your mind when you think of this business, if you had to explain it to like an agent, like in an easy like sentence or, or three words. OK, to an agent. Uh, coachability. Persistence. And. Belief. I, 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 that, that in itself is just so important and girl, I don't know why I'm getting emotional right now because it's, it's the truth there's so many things in life that people will tell you you can't do you'll never accomplish oh I've tried that before da, 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 da. I never was the person to just believe what they told me like I gotta do this for myself let me find out what happened and there's so many people that still going through life with other people's opinions that don't pay their bills, okay? I don't like people's opinions that don't pay my bills. So you got to make it make sense for you. And I know right now for me, I'm on a journey. I'm trying to reach a certain level of financial freedom that honestly, it's like sometimes you think, is it ever attainable? But in reality, I just want it to be in a way that I know I can be able to give back without worrying about giving back. So I'm just looking at the long-term goals of everything. And I think that some people really need to realign those goals and understand that it's not short-term, it's long-term. And if you're willing to invest this much of time into you, just imagine how much you're willing to invest into your future. So yeah, like believe in yourself. I, I love it. That, that, that was beautiful, Kyra. And literally three words you said, coachability, persistency and belief. If you if you have those three things, you're gonna win. It's just a matter of time if you're not already winning. And just like Kyra said, there's so many people there that will tell you, let's just say, I've done that, that doesn't work. Sounds too good to be true, right? That's my favorite one. That sounds too good to be true. And it's like, those are limiting beliefs other people have put on themselves, right? And now they're trying to put them on you or on your friend or on whomever. And we we all probably say things like that and don't even necessarily always notice what we're saying. But we have to notice that when it's our opportunity, it's not anybody else's chance to put a limiting belief on us. And Kyra, you basically said, I'm not, I'm not going to do that, right? This is long-term game. I see the long-term game. And I like what you said, like some of us have to take a step back and not think about what's going to happen tomorrow, but what is this going to look like for us in a year from now? What does it mean to me, to you, for financial freedom? right? What's our definition of that? What does that look like? What's the long-term goal? Like you said, giving back without having to worry about giving back, right? Like that's huge. And that's what this company is all about. And I have like the chills thinking of those three words because Kyra, you just wrapped it up so beautifully in the essence of if you believe in yourself, you're coachable and you follow through, you will win here, but you have to do those three things, right? And Kyra, you do those and 
you show up and I appreciate you so much. Um, last two questions for you. First would be, um, how do you share the opportunity with your warm market? And why do you feel like it's been an important opportunity, you know, for you to, to share or expose other people to? Okay. So, uh, you know, you, you get in so many different industries and people know you for doing certain things. So when they see certain, like, what do you mean you're doing this now? Wait, wait, oh my God, Carol, I didn't know you did this. And I love that. I truly do. But then what I realized in this business here is that I don't just want anybody, you know, with previous businesses, you can just, you know, take them in as they come. But with this one here, your demise will not be my fault. <laughs> I'm sorry, because you don't want to do the work that is entailed to, to get the, the reap and the rewards from it. So personally, with my warm market right now, certain individuals, I've been coming in that inbox and I'm like, look, I found it. I found it. You say you're ready. I found it. Come on. And the, when I talk like that, those are those individuals that they know, okay, Kyra is calling a play right now. Okay. Then I have those individuals. I've been looking at them, observing from afar. Okay. I like you. I'm prospecting all the time. Okay. I'm never not prospecting. I've learned that a long time being in this industry, these industries, but I am looking for a certain type of criteria. First and foremost, I'm also looking at your heart because even if you don't have what you think you don't have now, but if you have a heart to serve in other areas, I know that you're going to understand where this comes from. And being at convention and hearing him saying, we're doing God's work. Like I really, something just really just triggered me when he said that. And I'm like, wow, legacy and all these things that we see biblically. Why am I not really calling them out on those things? So always be closing. All right, Scott, you're right. <laughs> but yes, that's really what it is. And so for me now, I feel more comfortable, but I always felt comfortable. But I think now that I understand the leadership that's attached to us and knowing that when I'm not available, this person's available, that person is available. You want to feel that when you partner in a business. You don't ever want to feel like you're being a burden when you're calling someone. No, right now I need help. Okay, you can't answer. And guess what? Thank the Lord for the Slack channel and home help. Because when people can't answer, I'm going to close. <laughs> I remember That's I, walked right. out, <laughs> I walked out of a house one time and I had the application and uh, so, no, I didn't have something. Rob was like, well, did you have a paper app? And I was like, no, I didn't have that. He's like, Kyra, never leave out the house. You're supposed to collect everything, da, 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 da. I'm not licensed in many states, but I will collect all of your information now and I'll go to NIPR and get licensed and hopefully within two to three business days, your application will be submitted and I'll be contacting and saying you're approved. So yes, well, uh, for me, I love it. I, I think that now I'm even more excited at the convention that really motivated me more. And I'm like, you know what? How many more people do I know I can really touch and really say, look, you didn't did the rev race for a lot of years of life. I watched the journey. Are you ready for something different? And all I can offer them is just, you know, inviting them on board to, to join a winning team. If, if not, you can't say I never talked to you. And that's really how it's going now. So I'm inboxing everybody now, girl. So just get ready for them numbers. <laughs> I love it, Kyra. And I love how you also said that you're prospecting a certain kind of person, right? That's what you started with, right? You said in, you know, other ventures, so to say, like maybe you were just kind of across the board. You were like, you know what, if they're going to do something cool, if not, like, but you're like, I want to be in this with the right group, with the right group of people that want to be looking at a long-term vision with me, right? That have the right characteristics that, you know, they they work hard, they're coachable. They believe they believe in themselves, right? They, they plug in, right? All these things that we just talked about. So you're saying like, hey, I'm reaching out to everyone, but I'm not necessarily bringing everyone on board because they might not be the best fit, right? So you're very, this is what it is, this is what it isn't. Um, and I love that. And I love just seeing your team starting to grow with different, you know, family members, different friends, and no doubt in my, in my mind, Kyra, that you guys are going to just blow it up this year. And I'm just really excited um, for you and for your group. And I love what you said in terms of, hey, at least I know I told you about the opportunity, right? Um, and just quick insert story there, guys. It's like, we never know who's looking for this opportunity. Like, there's actually on this call right now, three people that I, I, I know personally that they weren't in their, their best financial situation, but I was unaware of that. And maybe I took too long to invite them to this opportunity, but when they got on board, 
they got on board. But you better believe I felt really selfish that knowing, hey, there's people out there. It might look like they're doing good. I hope they're doing good. But until I pass the opportunity to them, I can't say I've shared it, right? And that's going to get it off of my conscience and know that I did everything I could do to put you in a, a you know, what I believe is, is a great position to be in. Um, so I love how you presented that, Kyra. And I'm going to ask you just one last question, just because how you opened that was awesome. In terms of you said, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, pro, I'm, I'm prospecting people, but like, it has to be the right person. Like, what is the right person? Like, what is that person to Kyra, so to say? So my interaction with people in general, I'm a very observant individual, but I'm also a person that I feel energy, okay? Like energy for me is everything. If that energy does not feel right, I'm sorry. I won't even give it a chance. Like, honestly, that's just how I am. So when I'm interacting with people, like one of my clients, she started telling me all the stuff she was going through, been in sales all the years of her life and how she lost her job. And she's like, I'm just looking for something, Kyra. And I was like, you know what? Erase those worries away. You ready? She's like, what do you mean? I said, are you ready? I can help. I'm, I will help you change your life if you're willing to do exactly what you just told me you did for those companies for all those years of life in sales. And you said that they let you go. I'm putting you in position to be your own boss. And she signed up. She's doing um, uh, pre-licensing now. But it's just little moments like that. So I want to feel your heart. I do want to know that you don't you aren't afraid to serve because in life you have to serve. And I'm a person, I used to, I volunteer for stuff. I'm all, people know they can count on me. I can honestly say that about myself, but I can't say that for a lot of people. So some of those friends that I would assume in my heart, we've been best friends for forever, but I would not pick them because I do know for a fact, they don't always show up. So mm -hmm. if I have to really dig deep, I'm, I'm, I'm going to first and foremost, know how our connection is, how your heart is, how, how, how you really feel about, tasks, simple tasks will show me how willing, how far you're willing to go for the long term. So yeah, their, their heart, the energy, um, and just, you know, someone who's just willing to take a chance. One of my girlfriends inboxed me the other day and said, Kyra, I see you always been always doing different things. She called me serialpreneur and I said, I am. And she, and she said, Kyra, I'm, I'm interested and I tried to copy and paste the insurance industry. Uh, I have like a little type of type of thing. And I'll try to copy and paste it for her multiple times last night. It was like 12 in the morning and it would not paste. And I went back and I said, no, you're going to make it paste. Are you going to type this out to her? Because she's never come at you before about any business, any industry. What has appealed her to? But you also don't know what a person's going through. And I know that that young lady has gone through some things these past couple of years. So I'm willing to give a chance to you because I do know you from the past, but I do know your heart. So I'm willing to work with someone like that. And I'm hoping that she sees this as an opportunity. And I have a call with her after this call. So, hey, wish me luck, y'all. But I don't want to ever take someone's ability and say that they can't do something. But I do want to know that you're willing to do something first. I love that. I love that. And honestly, I don't think there could be a better answer in terms of like what someone actually is looking for and needs. Energy is huge. You and I have talked about that before. Like I can feel that energy through the phone, through Zoom, like through wherever. I know if you're being fake. I know if you're not being you. I know if you're being malicious. And if I don't like it, like you said, you just dismiss yourself. Mm -hmm. And then also the heart, right? You have to have that heart to serve. If you don't want to help people, you're not going to last a long time here. And also you're going to dread it. You're, you're going to wake up every day and be like, like I just don't even want to go to John's house and try to help him and his family. It's like, how much of more of a selfish statement could we say out loud, right? Like, I don't, I'm not really sure, right? Like, that's a pretty selfish one. And that they're willing to take a chance on themselves, right? It's like, not like, I know when I came into this industry, Kyra, like, I didn't believe him. I didn't even know if I believed in myself. I was 20. I was like, you know, like, I think so, right? I was like, yeah, right? Um, <laughs> like, let's do this. But, but. Really, it's like people built belief in me, but it was because I was willing to do things that made me uncomfortable, right? I was 20. They're like, oh, go talk to, you know, some 50 year olds about why they need insurance. And that was intimidating. But it's like the reality was I was the one with the license and they needed the insurance. So I had to go there, but I had I had to be willing to be uncomfortable. I had to be willing to want to do these things. And Kyra, that's what I hear you saying is 
the willingness, right? You talked about, you know, you sat in a client's home and guys, that's how much we can extend this opportunity. It's like Gianna also, she had somebody in a home the other day that, you know, she was able, we actually just got off a Zoom with them. He's in pre-licensing he's, and he's getting up and ready to go. He's excited. So guys, like serve your clients even outside of just the insurance policy. Some people need that opportunity just as much as they need that insurance policy. And Kyra, the belief I can imagine that you instilled in that woman, like, hey, we'll take that worry away. Like, let's, let's talk, let's do this thing was was huge and it might have been you might have been the one person that month that year that week that day that believed in her right and that's what it comes back to guys is like when people are willing to get uncomfortable they're willing to wear their heart on their sleeve they're willing to do the work that's the people we're working with. and that's what I hear you saying Kyra is I'm tracking with people who want to be moving for themselves too right and I'm going to help them get where they want to go so th that's beautiful and people you can count on by the way, Kyra, I do believe I can count on you, even just through this relationship thus far. We know we can count on you. When we're talking, and, you know, amongst each other, it's like, I, I've never, if someone said anything bad about you, like I find them and, I, and I'd slap them, right? Like, because there's nothing bad to say about you. Like there really isn't. And, and I don't say that just to say it. I say it because you show up, you're, the way you deliver anything, it's the way that Kyra wants to deliver it. But you're yes. coachable and you in in, in in you're willing, right? You're willing to get uncomfortable. Okay, in the next home, maybe I should say this: you go in and you implement. There's nothing worse than trying to teach somebody something that they won't do, right? And they're like, I don't know why I'm getting no result. Well, because you haven't changed anything. And Kyra, you've just been so willing to tell it like it is. Which, by the way, we we love over here on the East Coast. We're big tell it like it is kind of people, and I know you are too, which I love. In in the heart, the energy. And just the willingness to serve, guys. This is going to get old really quickly for you if you don't care about people in, in a regard of, like, I want to serve. I want to make this community a better place, right? I don't want the GoFundMe to have to happen. I don't, I don't want, you know, I don't want to see this partake in this family's life, right? And the same thing goes on the opportunity side. Kyra, what I hear you saying is this woman told you about her extensive sales background and kind of mm -hmm. how it ended and it wasn't pretty, I can imagine. And then you're saying like, hey, like you can use a lot of those skills with what I'm doing and I'm going to introduce you to this industry and like you're going to crush it because like you want to, because you have a reason to, because you're willing to. So I love that. And I love just that you share the opportunity. You're open about it. You're vocal about it. Even how you talked very briefly earlier on this call about clients that you got off of social media. Why? Just by getting your voice out there, just by being Kyra, right? Like you don't get on Instagram, Kyra. You're not like, okay, new person. Like you get on there and you talk from your heart, right? Like, I do. <laughs> and if not, people are gonna see that. Like they're gonna be like, that ain't Kyra. Like that's weird, right? Yeah. Like, like transparency not. is key with anything I do, with anything I touch. I don't ever want nobody to be questioning who I am through someone else. And I've dealt with that in previous um, business, whereas just being a servant person but attached to someone that was more controversial. And yet now they're thinking that image is me. And, and I had to realize, well, why would they make that assumption? But that's the only time they saw me was with her and or with that individual. So I, I, I didn't like that. I'm going to be honest. I did not like that. And I had to deal with a lot of, of reassuring these individuals that you do know you partner with me. So let's never question who you partnered with, okay? You know me as an individual. And, and that, when you got to rebuild relationships in certain areas that may have been broken in certain other areas, I don't like that. So I have to always make sure you, you, you are reminded, I am who I am. Transparency at its finest. And if you don't know the authentic version of me, you better call me so you can learn. <laughs> Big facts. And I love that, Kyra. And it's so true. And it just, it shines. And everybody can see that from clients to people you're working with to everybody on this call right now. You're just transparent. You are Kyra and, and you're, you know, unforgivably Kyra as you should be. And I, and I love that. And just to wrap up, what are your goals, Um, you know, to wrap up 2023? Like whether that's personal, that's business, that's both. What are some of your goals? Oh my gosh. Uh, of course, I saw that red jacket and I said, I need one of those. I need one of those. Okay. 
So I want I want to hit all the fame. I want to continuously immerse myself in the industry. I want to continuously grow as an individual, but also um, you know, be able to to have a team, but a team that I know that understands what we're doing. Like what is the ultimate goal? I want everyone to reach their goals, right? But I also have to realize that Kyra first has to reach hers. And for me, what that entails is seeing continuous growth in my months to come. And I do mean continuous growth. Like I saw a number that I know I can attain and I want to continuously go higher and then constantly just surround myself with positive people and individuals that are just wanting to pour into you and not just always take from you. I've been in a lot of situations where I've had poor people take from me, then they've poured into me. Here, I love to ask questions. Here, I love to uh, be around those individuals who I know is willingly pouring into you and not doing it for ego purposes, okay? Big difference. So for me personally, I'm, I've learned even in my own leadership skill set where I'm flawed. Like, I love the way y'all have everything lined up over here. And I'm just sitting back and like, okay, you're learning some things, Kyra, a lot. And you know what? It feels good because I'm taking charge. I'm taking back charge of what I may have neglected. So I'm grateful. I'm truly grateful. I love that, Kyra. And hey, I have to point out, you look good in red right now. So I can't <laughs> imagine when, when you got that red jacket on. How so good let me put the red on today. I, I feel yeah. something here. <laughs> yeah, like that. It's a sign. It's a sign. So ser on a serious note, though, no doubt, Kyra, are you going for that red jacket helping 400 families a month? I mean, in a year, sorry. Um, No doubt you're going to obtain that this year if that's what you want. Because like we talked about, you're just on an up and up trajectory. And no matter what that number is that you're thinking about in your head in terms of families, I know you can get there because I know who you are and how your work ethic is. And it just shines through. So keep doing what you're doing. And I love how you also just talked about continuous growth, right? Like within yourself, right? Like we have to level up each and every day. If we don't, we're going to be the same person that we were the day before and, or the month before or the year before or the century before. We don't want to fall ourselves. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to be in that category. We want to make sure we're becoming a better version of ourselves each and every single day.